Hello, my name is Andreas Dirk from Lexogen. I'm going to talk about nested barcode sets and sequences for the minimization of multiplexing specific cross-contamination in RNA-seq runs. Lexogen has products in various areas of RNA-seq for sampling, RNA preparation, NGS library prep and NGS data analysis. And the barcodes I'm going to talk about today are actually part of this portfolio. They are the 12 nucleotide unique dual indexing barcodes. Here's a brief outline of what I'm going to talk about. So first I'm going to say something about the background and motivation, then um, about how we designed our barcodes. And uh, finally, I'm going to give some experiments which uh, show how they perform in terms of cross-contamination and how they can be used in practice. The typical read depth for a single sample in an RNA-seq run lies between 1 million reads and 100 million reads. An RNA-seq run, on the other hand, produces many more reads than that. So for an X-seq, we have uh, 400 million single end reads per flow cell, and for an OVA-seq, we have 10, up to 10 billion single end reads per flow cell. The solution to this discrepancy between what a single sample needs in terms of reads and uh, what a sequencer provides is multiplexing. For this, we sequence multiple samples in a single RNA-seq run and identify the reads of a sample via an associated barcode, which is a short sequence of nucleotides which is designed beforehand. This approach raises the problem that incorrect barcode readouts can lead to sample cross-contamination. And for this reason, we want to design barcodes with a small probability of confusion, which means we want to design barcodes with a large inter-barcode distance or a large number of errors which can be corrected. Multiplexing requirements can vary. We can have different numbers of samples that we want to put on an RNA sequencer. We might require different levels of cross-contamination. So for instance, a low level of cross-contamination might be necessary for an application such as targeted RNA-seq in clinical diagnostics, where it's very important not to mix up the read of one patient with the reads of another patient. A medium level of cross-contamination, on the other hand, might be acceptable in an application such as a genome or transcriptome assembly, where we sequence the same region multiple times, and if we see a read in such a region which does not belong there, it is usually not a big problem. We would like to provide optimal barcode sets for each of these requirements. We would like, for instance, to maximize the inter-barcode distance or error correction for any given sample number, and we would like to adjust the barcode length to the required level of cross-contamination. A longer barcode is usually going to decrease the cross-contamination. But we cannot have different barcode sets for all these different requirements. We need a single barcode set for all these requirements. This is why we started to look at nested barcode sets. These are large sets of barcodes, which contain smaller sets of barcodes, which contain even smaller sets of barcodes, and so on and so forth. So the principle is a little bit like a matroshka, um, where smaller sets have higher inter-barcode distance and error correction than larger sets, and a user takes the barcodes from the smallest set, which is larger than the number of samples that they want to multiplex. This principle can also be seen in the graphic on this slide. So on the left side of this graphic, we have a barcode set consisting of four barcodes, which are labeled with the number one. They have a distance, which is D1. And by adding another set of barcodes, which are labeled with number two, we get a new set of barcodes, which is larger and has a barcode distance D2, which is smaller than the barcode distance D1 that we saw before. And we can, of course, add another set of barcodes to this set. Uh, these are labeled with three. And uh, then we get a barcode set, which is even larger with a smaller inter-barcode distance. 
nested barcode sets can be arranged on well plates so that it's easy for a user to always select the barcodes which are optimal for the number of samples that they want to multiplex. In this example here we have four barcode sets B1, B2, B3 and B4 which are contained in each other. B1 has four barcodes, B2 has eight barcodes, B3 has 16 barcodes and B4 has 24 barcodes. And by going top to bottom and left to right, the user is always going to select the barcodes which with the largest interbarcode distance. So therefore, they are always going to select the barcodes which are optimal for the number of samples that they want to multiplex. We also looked at nested barcode sequences, which are long barcode sequences containing shorter barcode sequences, containing shorter barcode sequences, and so on and so forth where the longer barcodes have higher interbarcode distance or error correction than shorter barcodes. And the user always sequences the length which is required for the level of cross-contamination that they want to achieve. The structure of a nested barcode sequence set is visualized in the graphic on this slide. On the left side, we have a set of barcodes which is similar to set B3 that we saw two slides earlier. And by adding these additional sequence here uh, to the barcodes in this set on the left side. We get a set which has longer barcodes and uh, a higher interbarcode distance, um, which is uh, shown here. The obtained barcodes very much depend on the barcode distance that is chosen as the interbarcode distance. A very common choice here is uh, the Hemic distance, which considers only substitutions, but no insertions and deletions. The Levenstein distance, on the other hand, considers substitutions, insertions and deletions, but has the problem that it compares the correct barcode sequence to a variable length sequence. So for instance, if there is an insertion in the barcode sequence, then uh, the barcode sequence is compared to a sequence which, which is one nucleotide longer. But that's not the way it works in RNA sequencing, because if there is an insertion, we are not sequencing one nucleotide longer. We are always sequence the a preset length of nucleotides uh, as the barcode. And um, this is respected in a distance which we call uh, the fixed frame Levenstein distance, uh, which is called by other um, authors the free divergence or a sequence Levenstein distance or simply the modified Levenstein distance. And this distance um, properly takes care of insertion so the barcodes can actually move outside of the sequencing frame and for deletions on the other hand nucleotides after the barcode can enter the sequencing frame. The problem, a technical problem about this uh, distance is that it does not obey the triangle inequality and uh, therefore one has to be a bit careful um, in order to guarantee a certain level of error correct correction. We also designed our barcodes to have balanced nucleotide distributions, which is important to ensure proper base calling calibration of the RNA sequencer. This in turn ensures that we have a high pass filter rate. We did this by using an A-star search to find an optimally balanced subset of a desired size. Um, it's not possible to find barcode sets which are perfectly balanced because of all the other restrictions that we place on our barcodes, but um, we achieve a reasonably good balancing which is good enough to work in practice. So for instance, for a four barcode set, um, we have uh, four out of the 12 positions which are perfectly balanced and for the remaining eight uh, out of these 12 positions uh, there's a single nucleotide missing. The larger the number of barcodes uh, we have, uh, the closer our distributions are actually uh, to uniform. This slide shows the final barcode set that we obtain. We have a set of barcodes containing 384 barcodes with an interbarcode distance of 4, correcting a single error. Uh, this in turn contains a barcode set of 96 with a distance of 5, correcting two errors. 
and this again contains a barcode set of 24 and a barcode set of 4 with distances and errors corrected given in the graphic. These are the properties for 12 nucleotide long barcodes. If we want to know the properties for 10 and 8 nucleotide long barcodes, we need to subtract 1 and 2 respectively from the distance and calculate the number of errors corrected by the formula in the caption of this figure. So for instance, for 8 nucleotides and a set of 4, we would have a distance of 5 correcting 2 errors and for um, 8 nucleotides and uh, the 24 set, we would have a distance of 4 correcting a single error. To quantify the cross-contamination that we can achieve with our barcodes, we performed dual index experiments. In a dual index experiment, one selects barcode pairs BI7 and BI5 and uses them as I7 and I5 indices. The graphic on this slide shows a typical example of a fragment which is sequenced by an RNA sequencer. Such a fragment is flanked by the P5 and P7 adapters, which are followed by the I5 index and the I7 index. For the I5 index and I7 index, we choose barcodes from our barcode set. Um, we demultiplex with respect to all our barcode combinations, um, not just the ones that we put into the experiment, and accumulate read counts for unused or unexpected I7 and I5 barcode combinations. And this uh, tells us how often we see that one barcode changes into another barcode, which is th the phenomenon uh, called barcode hopping. With our dual index experiments, we also wanted to look at uh, primary sources of cross-contamination. The objective here was uh, to measure three different types of cross-contamination. So first we looked at uh, cross-contamination related to three different oligosynthesis providers. And here we distinguished between cross-contamination at the provider site and the cross-contamination we see within an RNA-seq experiment. Another type of cross-contamination we looked at was the in-house cross-contamination, experimental cross-contamination, which is mainly the result of handling. And uh, the last one was uh, the background cross-contamination, which is uh, the result of random sequencing errors or the lab environment. For this purpose, we came up with the following experimental design. We synthesized 12 dual index barcodes, four per provider, but use only nine of these dual indices, three per provider in the next seek run. Three of the 12 dual indices were left out. To avoid batch effects, we prepared each library on a different day. And at that point in time, we had 96 barcodes. And therefore, we demultiplexed with respect to all 96 times 96 barcode combinations. This then gives us a read count matrix, which is visualized here. The columns of this matrix are indexed by the I7 index. The rows of this matrix are indexed by the I5 index. And uh, different areas inside uh, this matrix then correspond to different types of cross-contamination. So for instance, we have a block A here, which corresponds to the nine barcodes that were used in the experiment. And so therefore, the off-diagonal elements in A correspond to the experimental cross-contamination. Uh, we further have blocks P1, P2, and P3, which contain the barcodes uh, corresponding to each provider. And therefore, the within provider experimental cross-contamination is reflected by the off-diagonal elements in these blocks. We have uh, block B here, uh, which corresponds to the three left out barcodes, and uh, the cross contamination reflected in the, by this area is actually the provider site dependent cross contamination. And finally, we have this very large area here, C. Uh, this contains, uh, corresponds to the 84 not synthesized barcodes, and therefore the contamination reflected by this area is the random cross-contamination. These are the results of our experiment. 
We measured the cross-contamination in reads parts per million in the different blocks that were shown in the last slide. And so therefore we get an experimental cross-contamination of 11.9 reads parts per million in block A. And for uh, the uh, different uh, synthesis providers, we get experimental cross-contamination of 1.0, 0.28 and 3.1. Uh, for the provider site uh, dependent cross contamination and the random cross contamination, uh, this is negligible. Uh, we also try to calculate uh, the experimental provider independent cross contamination, uh, but this is actually a very pessimistic estimate and this number might be considerably smaller. So, overall, the conclusion is that uh, we saw no random cross contamination, no cross contamination at the provider site, but we actually see uh, some noticeable differences uh, in the cross contamination between the different providers. And so, therefore, this experiment helped us choose uh, the right synthesis provider to uh, synthesize our barcodes. We also performed an experiment to evaluate the cross-contamination that can be achieved with different readout lengths of our barcodes. And for this purpose, we used an exit run with 96 unique dual indices. We demultiplexed without error correction and with error correction. And we looked at two different metrics. We looked at the percentage of invalid barcode sequences. And among the valid barcode sequences, we looked at cross-contamination. The results of this experiment can be seen in this table. Uh, these columns here contain uh, the results for 8 nucleotide, 10 and 12 nucleotide readout lengths. And you can see that uh, the percentage of invalid sequences is lowest for 8 nucleotides and highest for 12 nucleotides, which is not surprising because the chances of observing an error for longer sequences are higher. The cross-contamination is actually almost identical for 8, 10, and 12 nucleotide readout lengths. If we correct a single error, then we see that uh, the percentage of invalid sequences is very similar for all the different readout lengths. But we see also that uh, for 8 nucleotides, uh, the cross-contamination increases by a factor of 10. Um, if we correct two errors for 12 nucleotides, um, we see that uh, the invalid barcode sequences are lowest uh, amongst all the experiments, um, but we also see a slight increase in cross-contamination. This table also contains results for six nucleotide barcodes, uh, which have a hemming distance of three. And you can see that in comparison to the 12 nucleotide barcodes um, and their different readout lengths, the invalid uh, sequences are much higher, uh, as are the cross-contamination values. So in summary, we can see that um, error correction reduces the invalid barcode sequences, but increases uh, cross-contamination uh, slightly sometimes. And um, if we do not want to do error correction, then actually eight nucleotide barcode uh, readout length is uh, sufficient because this gives us the smallest uh, percentage of invalid sequences. But uh, with error correction, we should use at least 10 nucleotide long barcodes um, because uh, for eight nucleotides, the cross contamination is too high. Summarizing our experiments show that we achieve low levels of cross-contamination for all barcode readout lengths, and that we can adjust the barcode readout length to obtain a desired level of cross-contamination or error correction. We also saw that our high inter-barcode distance means that we are not affected by random error, and we can therefore detect small variations in cross-contamination among oligosynthesis providers. We designed nested barcode sets to minimize cross-contamination and maximize error correction for up to 120,259 samples. This large barcode set has an inter-barcode distance, Levenstein distance of 2, and an inter-barcode distance, Hemming distance of 3. Um, this large uh, barcode set, of course, only exists on paper. 
Currently we have synthesized 384 barcodes, 12 nucleotides long, for NextSeq and NovaSeq, which can be read out at lengths of 8 nucleotides, 10 nucleotides and 12 nucleotides. Our barcodes are available as the 12 nucleotide unique dual index system from Lexogen and can be used in combination with Lexogen's QuantSeq 3' mRNA-Seq library prep kit and also in combination with Lexogen's Coral Total RNA-Seq library prep kit. In addition, it can be used as an add-on kit for a variety of library preps, including non-Lexogen ones, which utilize TrueSeq compatible stubby adapters. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention. If you have any further questions, please address them to myself or to info at Thank you.